Welcome back dear friends. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about the next part of our Sparta's lesson from the head and neck. So what are the things we are going to cover in this chapter, in this lesson is the perinasal ear sinuses I am going to uh, show you and also the structures present in the nasal pharynx and also the structures related to the larynx. Let us discuss about it. Let us get started. Now, <clears throat> in the sagittal section of the head and neck, coming to the face, in the nasal cavity especially, what are the things which usually they ask is the concha and meatus we have discussed earlier. And today I am going to expose the opening of eustachian tube. So the cartilaginous part of eustachian tube is opening into the nasopharynx, lateral wall of nose on the nasopharynx. So this particular thing they usually ask in the examination. They pass any probe through this and ask you to identify that particular opening and mention the structures opening into it. Okay, so what you have to write is it is a cartilaginous part of eustachian tube opening into the nasopharynx. Then above the Yes, next one is above the cartilaginous part of your statue tube opening, there is an elevation. This elevation is called as tubal elevation. Tubal elevation. So sometimes they may pierce this, pierce this, and ask you to identify that structure. Okay. So there is a as actually the eustachian tube, the opening it is a trumpet shaped one. So trumpet shaped one, anterior part of the trumpet as you can see that it is a widening part will be present so here in this widening part surrounding this widening part we can identify this elevation called as tubal elevation next one which you are going to see is the four paranasal air sinuses four paranasal air sinuses so sometimes they ask this particular thing they put any probe in this and ask you to identify that particular structure so frontal air sinus where does it opens so frontal air sinus opening you have to study okay the next one is sphenoidal air sinus sphenoidal air sinus where to identify the sphenoidal air sinus and where to identify how to identify the uh, frontal air sinus just above the nasal cavity above the nasal cavity in the frontal bone the space it is present is called as frontal air sinus above the nasal cavity posterior superiorly we can identify this sphenoidal air sinus remember this is a nasal cavity lateral wall of nose above the lateral wall of nose in the frontal bone frontal air sinus posterior superiorly this is posterior part and superior part posterior superiorly the air sinus which is present here is sphenoidal air sinus sphenoidal air sinus sometimes in the dry skull also they may ask regarding the frontal air sinus so here you can see this is a frontal air sinus this is a frontal air sinus then moving to the ethomoidal air cells sometimes they may ask this particular thing if the specimen is very clear then they may ask this particular structure called as ethomoidal air sinus or ethomoidal air cells you can write it down okay so that is about the Three pair of three air sinuses I have shown. And next one, which I am going to show you, is maxillary air sinus. Yes, moving to the maxillary air sinus, where to identify that? So the maxillary air sinus opening into the middle meatus, middle meatus. So the opening, they pass any probe, they put any probe in this and ask you to identify that particular opening. And you have to mention that it is the name of that structure so maxillary air sinus is opening just below this bulla ethamoidalis bulla ethamoidalis that is a half moon shaped structure called as hiatus semilunaris through this hiatus semilunaris you can identify the maxillary air sinus is opening then next which you are going to see is the epiglottis cartilage of larynx cartilage of the larynx so here how i am showing you this specimen is we have taken a section along with tongue and the pharynx so i have opened the pharynx posterior wall of the pharynx i have opened then i can see clearly the laryngeal inlet then the posterior part of the cricoid cartilage, cricoid cartilage called as lamina of cricoid cartilage that i can see clearly from 
posterior aspect so in this particular this is a specimen actually in uh, college they usually they will be having that so sometimes they may ask this particular structure so one is epiglottis the leaf shaped cartilage they ask okay which type of cartilage it belongs to that they ask okay so epiglottis is consisting of elastic cartilage that you have to write in the examination next one is the ariepiglottic folds ariepiglottic folds so this is the ariepiglottic fold right and left ariepiglottic fold so entire this particular structure is called as posterior part called as laminae of cricoid cartilage laminae it is a broader part over the laminae of cricoid cartilage we can identify the triangular shape retinoid cartilage is sitting over it okay so the cricoid cartilage laminae and the retinoid cartilage they are all covered by the mucous membrane so we cannot see clearly unless and until if they remove the mucous membrane then only we can identify the muscles which are attached to the posterior uh, part or laminae of cricoid cartilage and the retinoid cartilage but in this specimen what we can identify is this is the laminae of cricoid cartilage then over it retinoid cartilage in the epiglottic fold we can identify corniculate and the cuneiform cartilages are present so they may pierce this and ask you what is this fold okay so epiglottic fold what is present in it means corniculate and the cuneiform cartilages are present in it the next one is the pyriform fossa this is a pyriform fossa just lateral to the epiglottic fold lateral to the epiglottic fold which we can identify the depression called as pyriform fossa so pyriform fossa they put any probe in that and ask you to write the boundaries of the pyriform fossa okay so you don't write it as smuggler's fossa the name is pyriform fossa remember that the name is pyriform fossa you have to write the pyriform fossa only okay so <clears throat> the boundaries you have to study and just right in the examination so medially are epiglottic for laterally which structures are present all the things you study and write in the examination then moving to the next structure is the soft pellet soft pellet just above the tongue the projection hanging projection is called as soft pellet uh, the questions usually they ask regarding the soft pellet is muscles of the soft pellet muscles of the soft pellet any three muscles they may ask or any four muscles they may ask okay four muscles of the soft pellet like that they may ask in the examination practical examination then <clears throat> here in the sagittal section we can identify this is called as epiglottis epiglottis then the tongue as you all know that tongue the next question may be sometimes they may ask the extrinsic muscles of the tongue and sometimes they may ask the nerve supply of the tongue nerve supply of the tongue so that is about the spotters which we have covered in this class in the next class we are going to discuss uh, some other structures usually they ask in the head and neck and then we'll jump into the uh, limbs already limbs have started the osteology part i have finished osteology part i have finished now the gross anatomy gross anatomy structures i'm going to show you in the next class thank you dear friends see you soon with the new class